We're on the ocean off Nova Scotia, Canada to get to one of the coolest cabins I've ever seen. It's a three hour paddle from the closest town and sits on a 50 acre island off a remote stretch of coastline that's notoriously known for having rough seas. Our obsession with this place began last summer when we stumbled upon it during a sea kayak trip. And ever since then, we couldn't shake the urge to learn more. After a lot of research, I eventually connected with the owner and it turned out he's a super nice guy and a really interesting man as well. He's a sailor, he's a writer, he's a man full of stories, and he graciously allowed us to go back and spend some time on his island. It's about a quarter mile cut trail to get to the cabin, which sits at the highest point of this island. Home sweet home. The owner bought this island and moved him and his wife and his stepson here where they built this off-grid cabin and lived here for a full year. full-on bathtub. I'm gonna soak in this. Full-on washroom. Look at the size of that claw compared to my head. And he's got a big head. And I got a monster head. Jeez. There's like two chicken breasts worth of lobster in there. So many different types of books. We are on the second floor of this cabin. And this is the money spot. This is where we'll be spending most of our time. So much natural light, which I love in a place. The sink they made out of a whale jawbone. Everything in here has its own unique design. It's incredible. I'm sure we're gonna find a lot more little cool things as we, as we explore this place. Sink a little more. A big jig. Yeah. Look at those chomp. 
Champions. Mushroom bacon risotto. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. turning out to be a really nice day. We're gonna pack a day bag and go explore. We're really lucky, it's the first day of October and there's essentially no swell and not a lot of wind. So it's perfect conditions to get out. When we landed yesterday, all this was above the water. Now we're pretty much at high tide. All right. What shall we do today? Hoping we're gonna have enough time to get into the water later 
to do a little underwater exploring because even here the water quality you can see at least 15 feet deep and the main rock here is granite which is really white and it just pops As soon as I get the long lens out, the birds always fly away. We were paddling along and we, we came around this corner and there's this cove and we found this beach. It's like a paradise back here. Sheltered from the wind, endless sand. Also, I'm seeing bobcat tracks on the beach, which is pretty cool. It's hard to believe it's October 1st today and it's t-shirt and shorts weather. We might get a sunburn. Wild. We have some naan and cheese and meat and hummus and mustard. Some peppers you can put on there. Lots of fruits and veg. We've arrived back at the island. So I think if there's gonna be mussels, they're gonna be where there's a little more turning water. So right at that point where it's sort of like sloshing a bit, sort of peek our noses out there.
All right, the water was really warm for us. Again, it's October 1st, it's getting into the colder conditions, but compared to a couple of months ago, it's pretty similar. We weren't out there too long. We just went out there to look for some mussels, though we did find some really nice walls with some kelp forests, a lot of the fish, a lot of those perch and some pollux, but we only got one measly mussel. It's a very nice mussel, but it's not gonna be good enough for dinner tonight. We're gonna do a little fishing to see if we can catch some mackerel. And if not, we're gonna be eating vegetarian tonight. A Pollock! <laughs> nice. Dinner tonight, we're doing a Thai coconut milk noodle dish. We forgot the coconut powder. We're gonna have to do a bit, bit of a pivot. And add some yellow curry paste. Big old dollop of it. Maybe even a little more. I think we're like regardless of the lack of coconut milk, I think what really does it is the amount of raw ginger in here. <laughs> <laughs> it just overpowers everything. <laughs> you don't really like it, eh? No.
we're just cleaning up, getting ready to leave. And I wanted to show you, I wanted to give you a better demonstration of this kitchen sink. It is a whalebone jaw. And the way it's set up is the water goes down into the jaw and then out a tube and the tube goes out. It fills with water. And then with the pulley, you pull it off the block and allow it to lower. And then all the water flows out. The owner told us there is a well on the island and we're gonna to try to find that to fill up that jug that we were using to wash our dishes. Might be where the coffee cup is over here. That's probably it. What? That's it. No. Yeah, it is. This is it. This is it. That's the well. Yeah. I don't think it's the right spot. I think it is. The way he explained it, like it was like a natural hole that had fresh water, even though the water looked like it was really nasty. It's freaking black. Maybe we just use our extra water. Yeah. A little more stained than we were thinking. We have extra water that we brought with us. We're just gonna use that to refill the jug. Another thing that we haven't showed you guys yet is the small fishing shack that was at the entrance beach. There used to be a wood burning stove there. There's a sink, the bare necessities, some cool finds on the island. Definitely a spot where you could stay. Another funky thing about this spot, I'd say one of my favorites is the outhouse. built with a whalebone. It seems really old. <laughs> Hopefully I don't fall in. The bone's a little narrow. I really gotta fit my junk really far back. It's sort of, it's a little weird. The butt placement. The bone fits my butt perfectly. I guess now I could say I pooped through a whalebone. Just like that, we're off. It's about a two to three hour paddle back to where we parked the car. We'll see another beautiful day and we're gonna enjoy every paddle stroke.